Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Okay, so today I want to try and do a little bit of um, a hybrid project. I want to create, um, a, a do a mixed media art tag, which I haven't done one for absolutely ages. So I thought I'd have a little play today and do a bit of a hybrid project, which is both a mixture of collage, paint, and I also want to see if I can bring in some of that crackle glaze that I've been playing with, just as another kind of mini kind of experiment, just to see how it works. So I've cut one of my, um, art tag shapes and I've cut it out of a grey grunge board so it's quite thick and sturdy and will take the paint really really well. Um, I thought I'd got some clear gesso out. I did but I put it in the wrong place. There we go. I left it on my other desk. So I've got some clear gesso, some uh, Prima Marketing, Art Basics, uh, Finnebear brand if you like to play with as well but I want to put a base coat of colour down on my tag to start off with. So I'm going to start off with some darker colours. And I've pulled out um, two colours from my Dina Wakeley um, acrylic paint collection. I've got the marine blue, deep blue, and I've also got the olive, which I think these two colours work really, really well together. They're almost kind of heritage colours. Um, and I'm going to try and create a kind of grungy, old, worldy kind of feel with this. And you'll see why when I've got my collage element out. So I think these two colours will work well. But I've also got some lighter colour. I've got Elephant and Buff that I want to try and put over the top of those colours to create the top coat for the crackle where it's going to go. And obviously I've got my Polyvine Crackle Glaze. And because this one's nearly running out, I purchased a new one so I've now got a brand new bottle to play with. Um, so that's the colours, those are the colours, those are the resources. I've got some collage elements, I'm also going to be using some matte medium. I'm, in this instance I'm going to be using the Slap It On matte from Indigo Blue only because um, I haven't used it for a while and I've got some left and I've got a funny feeling that um, there might just be enough left in the bottle um, for me to play with and then it's done and then you know, I can move on to something else. So to start off with then, I'm going to start and just add some paint onto the art tag. And I'm going to do it randomly. I'm not, did that go on my finger then? No, I actually went into the lid. Um, I'm just going to add it, first of all. Now you see, I should have dried my brushes off properly. I've just washed them. <laughs> But that's okay because it's just soaking straight into the grunge board so while that's still wet I'm going to bring the olive drop that down and I'm going to just blend those colors together and I'm not particularly bothered about um, where's my kitchen roll gone things have disappeared there we go just dry the brush off a little bit if the colours mix and blend, that's okay. That's pretty much what I want to happen. Because this is going to be the base coat. And you'll not really see that much of this once I've got all my college collage elements. But I wanted these dark colours to show through. Um, underneath the crackle glaze or darker colours to show underneath the crackle glaze. Now look, that green has kind of overtaken the blue a little bit too much so I'm just going to work that in a little bit more just to bring that darker colour out. Now I know the light's shining on this so all you're getting is a little bit of glare but hopefully when it dries there won't be as much glare to show. That's better. A bit more blue into the mix there. Maybe a bit more at this side. 
don't think I can cover the glare up that much. There we go. Just with my hand at the moment so you can see where I'm putting the paint. Bit more of that dark blue over here, down there towards the bottom. I think that will do me. Right, I'm going to drop those two brushes in some water that I've got to the side and I'm going to give that a blast with my heat gun and get that dried off and then when that's done in the words of Arnie I'll be back. Okay so the base coat on my tag is now dry. You can see there is a little bit of shine still on there. It is dry, it's just where the paint has dried a little bit shiny but you can see the dark colours that I was going for in that background now. So I'm going to put this to one side just for a moment or two and then I'm going to bring in my bits of collage that I've got. Now I've already printed and cut them out um, from my collection so I've got a photograph of Queen Victoria, I've got a reduced down um, dictionary page printout um, showing the word um, journey or joyful if you like. Um, there I've got a mini world map, I've got a reduced down sized little postcard with postmarks and a few stamps on, British stamps because of Queen Victoria and I've got a couple of old tickets. So I want to grunge the edges of these up a little bit so I'm going to bring in my archival, my distress archivals, I'll grab my vintage photo and then I'm just going to load up my blending sponge with a wee bit of ink and then I'm just going to go around the edges just to distress them up a little bit and I'm using archival because I will be putting um, some wet medium over the top of this and obviously archival ink is permanent when dry and if I'd used normal distress ink or water-based one then it would react to whatever medium I'm putting over the top so and I don't want that which is why these little mini archivals are a godsend so I'm gonna carry on and do um, the same with all the other little bits of ephemera that I've got because this is a bit of a boring process I'll just whip through it. We'll speed through. Okay, so I've got my tag, I've got my collage elements that I want to stick down. So I'm going to start adding these into the background now. So I'm going to be placing that main one there and then I'm going to put that one about there. And then Queen Vic is going to go there. I've got this little postcard which I'm going to put there. And then these little tickets can go like so. I might actually put that one up there like that. And then this other little ticket, which I think I'll turn around because we've already got the Haymarket bit there. I'm going to put that like that. So I think that's pretty much going to be where everything's going to go. So I'm going to, now I said I was going to use Slap It On, but I don't think I'm going to now. I'm actually going to use just a diary 
glue stick. Because if I use slap it on it, then that's going to affect the crackle glaze. So that's my reason for that. Let me just bring my splodgy mat back in. Do in the middle first and just go around the edges. I'm not particularly too bothered whether um, the edges of these curl up a little bit, that's fine. Let's just stick that down about there before that sticks and grabs. I'll add actually, would that be better? No, no, no. Stick that little ticket there. That's it, that's a little bit straighter. And then we can get our world map. Down there. And then Queen Vic. Stick her in the middle, around the edges. Like that. Right now I haven't stuck, pushed down the edges on that just yet. So I can put the postcard underneath, like we said, and get that Haymarket ticket. Add my glue on there. Stick that about there. And then that Haymarket ticket, like we said, the other Haymarket ticket. Turn that round. Pop that there. And just push the edges down. Hopefully that will grab. So that's all my bits on that tag stuck down. So I'm going to go over the top now. Hopefully this isn't going to ruin anything with just a quick coat of clear gesso. And because when I printed all my images I used my Epson printer, those of you that have followed and watched my videos for a while will know that the printer ring that's in my printer, my Epson WF2630, that's the model number, uses size 16 ink cartridges and those ink cartridges have um, a brand of ink in them called Durabrite which when dry is permanent which is unusual for an inkjet printer. So it means that once you've printed something, the ink ain't gonna go anywhere. So you can add wet mediums over the top, varnish, gesso, whatever, without any of the colors running. Okay. Clean the excess gesso off my brush. I 
now I need to get it dry. Right, that gesso has dried. As you can see, everything's completely matte, which is cool, where I've gone over with the gesso anyway. Um, there's still some shiny bits with the acrylic paint underneath, which is perfect. So now I want to add my crackle glaze. Now I'm going to add the crackle glaze over everything. And I'm going to add the crackle glaze in vertical brush strokes. I'm making sure I go over everything. Now, one of the other little tests that I haven't done yet on the crackle glaze is how it reacts with an acrylic clear varnish. That's for the future. Another one of my little tests that I need to do. Okay, so now that I think I have crackle glaze everywhere, clean the brush. That needs to be dried. Now, according to the bottle of crackle glaze, depending on the humidity of where you are, it takes within 15 minutes to one hour depending on temperature and humidity. So, I also know that if this stuff is okay to heat set with a heat gun. So I will leave it for a bit and then maybe encourage it with a heat gun just to finish it off. So I'll be back when it's dry. Okie dokie, right. So, Crackle Glaze is now dry. I've taken some of the Dina Wakely Buff acrylic paint, so that's an off white. I've added some onto my paint palette and I've added a little bit of water just to make it a little bit more runny, if you get my understanding. And, and I'm now just going to start adding the paint in very small kind of brush strokes around the edge. Not enough. Kind of blend that in. You can see it's starting to crackle out the top there. Maybe not so much of that side. Real delicate kind of dabs. It's crackled on the edge there where it's gone on to the actual image. So we are getting some reaction. Which is cool. Not so much up here, so I don't know what happened with the crackle glaze up there. That's kind of interesting. That's fine. Okay, so I'm actually going to leave it for a good half an hour or so and see what happens. Because theoretically it should have worked over the top of the gesso. It has done in the past. I've not used the clear gesso before, but getting a few interesting results. Okay, 
I'll leave that to dry and then I'll be back when it's done. Okay, so it's had a good hour and a half to two hours worth of drying time. And as you can see, um, because there's a little bit of a curl to the cardboard, the paint that I put on has just pulled in slightly from the edges. All that bit down at the bottom is now cracked and pulled as well. Not a bad little effect, and that's just using that overlay of the gesso, then the crackle, and then the paint on top. So I'm really happy with the way that's kind of turned out, but I don't like the shine. So I'm going to go over it with clear gesso again. This time I'm going to go over the top of everything, including the crackle. So more clear gesso. This time we're going to go over everything. Now can you see how the gesso has started to react with that crackle glaze? Which is quite interesting. Now is the gesso reacting to the crackle, gesso, crackle glaze? I think it is actually. It's quite an interesting effect. But I'm only using the gesso here just to get rid of the shine. So, and it's pulling, yeah, well, it's definitely pulling, which is fine, don't mind that. I'm hoping it will just go completely clear. Surprising how it reacts. Gesso has actually started to crackle a little bit. That's really interesting. Okay, so you can see the gesso. Let's get it dried. Let's see whether it disappears. Okay, so the gesso is dry and look, we've had a kind of weird chemical reaction to the crackle glaze with that clear gesso. It's reacted and gone cloudy, but it's still cracked, look. Which is a kind of cool effect, but not one that I particularly wanted. So I'm going to just try a little bit of an experiment to see whether or not I can lift that gesso off. So I'm going to spray a little bit of water onto a paper towel. And I'm just going to rub it gently to see whether or not it will come off. No, it's not coming off even with water. Hmm, let's just try with a little bit of alcohol and see what happens. So I'm going to use an alcohol-based gel. This is hand sanitizer, but it contains alcohol. Let's just see whether that breaks it up. How weird. Not sure how I feel about that, whether it's a positive thing or not. <laughs> Just get rid of that hand sanitizer so it doesn't come off with water and it doesn't come off. Now then, I don't think I've got an emery board. I did have an emery board. Maybe I could try sanding it back a little just to see whether or not I could just take off that top layer. Hmm. Anyway, before we go any further, let's just grab that archival ink again. And this time, let's just add a little bit of grunge over the top of the crackle. Which was what I was going to do towards the end of this anyway. Let's 
suppose I could try and just sepia. Ah, now then. It's interesting. So, adding some of that um, distressing, the archival distressing around the edges has just kind of lifted that and grunged it up a little bit, made it look a little bit older, but you can still see Queen Vic in there, quite interestingly. Adding that distressing has made it stand out a little bit more. But I'm still going to work on this just to see whether or not I can maybe just lift that top layer of paint off, all that gesso off, without damaging the image of Queen Victoria. The only other way around that is to print off another Queen Victoria picture and stick it over the top. But I'm going to have a little play with it first and see whether or not I need to do that. Okay, so, partial success. I was able to remove the top layer of gesso with nothing more complicated than using my fingernail. So literally just scratching the top surface of the gesso with my fingernail, just rubbing it slightly, has removed most of it without damaging the underside, apart from a tiny, tiny little bit there. So I was able to remove most of that top coat of milky gesso just by scratching it ever so gently with my fingernail. But I've left it around the outside there just to add a little bit of extra texture and grunge to it. I like that. I like the effect. Fiddly, but I like it. And it shows that you can salvage stuff if you really want to. So I'm just gonna finish it off. Uh, and I've grabbed my um, Tim Holtz stickers. These are the small talk ones. And I've gone onto the black and I've pulled out a phrase that I think works rather well for this particular project. So, which I'm going to stick actually there. So, everything is possible when nothing is sure. And I think the whole kind of crackle experiment, not being sure that it would work, just goes to show that you can get some interesting results just by pure and utter accident. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with all your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, like I said at the beginning, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I'm going to try and think up of some more ways in which I can use this crackle paint, maybe in some future videos. Thought from me, I'll see you all very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. Thank you.